Scotland jersey after your stint on the Lions tour. Just what did you take from that experience that you're hoping to take into your game with Scotland now? Yeah, it was, it was an unbelievable experience. I uh, really enjoyed my time away. Um, learned a lot. Um, I think what it gave me a, a lot as well is it made me really excited about coming back here and getting back involved with Scotland and with Glasgow and how much potential and how we actually can achieve some things. You know, I think sometimes you put other countries and maybe, maybe a pedestal or think they're doing something different, but um, I think the groups that we've got, I'm, I'm involved with in both Scotland and with Glasgow and with Scotland. And yeah, there were, there were some players that could definitely mix it up there with the best. So, um, came back with the real excitement of getting involved and getting started. Didn't play as much rugby as I wanted to, um, but one of these things, but really enjoyed it and uh, enjoyed it for, for all it was worth. It was obviously a good learning experience for you, um, what do you think you you can take from your stint with the Lions there that can really maybe help improve your game as you come back into a Scotland jersey? Um, you know, I just keep doing what I'm doing. Um, I got picked for what I did for Scotland, and um, so yeah, just gave me the belief and the confidence. You know, and um, what I'm doing is it's not a bad job. So just keep building my fundamentals. Um, yeah, I'm nowhere near the finished article, um, but I'm trying to get better every day in the environment we've got here, and I definitely feel like I can, I can do that. So I'm really excited for the future. Um, looking ahead to the, the tests, um, Gregor Townsend says the next step for Scotland to really take that next step is to start going into games believing um, we can beat anyone. How important can, can this set of games be in kind of creating that mindset in the squad that you go into any game thinking we're going to win here, whoever the opposition is? I think if you look back to our last Six Nations, you know, I think we definitely, that, that belief is growing. Um, it's a Scottish characteristic, I think, from, from years gone by. And I've been lucky I've been involved, when I've been involved with Scotland, we've been winning things and winning games, you know, and I've, got, I've, got, I've gone into every Scotland game thinking we can win. You know, we knew that the All Blacks a few years ago during this time, we should have won. Um, so yeah, I think it's a great opportunity to, to see some new guys come in and the new additions to the squad, all really good men, looking forward to hopefully seeing them get an opportunity. And um, yeah, I think we take each game as it comes, but to play against the, the world champions and play against South Africa again after um, the Lions tour and then also Australia, you know, had some great results in the World Rugby Championship. Yeah, it's going to definitely see where we're at and going to be a great, um, a great challenge for us, but one that I think we're definitely up for. Thank you. That's all for me. Thank you. You're used to playing, obviously, the Six Nations teams. You've had quite a lot of experience against South African teams and players. What particular challenges and different challenges do Tonga present? Um, every Tonga I've met, um, they're not small human beings. So, um, and they like physical rugby. So, um, yeah, it's definitely on my street. Um, I think with all the, the Islander teams, you know, you know what they're going to bring, very direct running routes. Um, big big players that if you run straight at them, they're going to smoke you, you know. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, it's going to be a, a tough challenge. And um, recently had Walt Fita come to Glasgow, um, really good guy, um, but yeah, he's a mutant. So, of course, uh, he was saying, hopefully, I'll hopefully see you next week. And yeah, they're all that size, and, and he's a winger, he's bigger than me. So, um, it's going to be a physical challenge, but one that I think uh, we're definitely up for, and hopefully, if involved, looking forward to. And with this series of games, what would you say the ambitions are for the for the squad over these next four games? We're going into every game to win it. So, uh, yeah, we'll take it each game as it comes, you know. Um, so we've got Tommy this week. We'll review them and see where they're weak, see where they're strong, and then we'll go from there. So we're not going to get, get too far ahead of ourselves. Each week's a different challenge, you know. We've got Wallabies who are physical and fast. We've got Japan and who are very, very, very quick. And we've got South Africa who are fast and physical as well so as well as well as Tonga you know so um all four teams pose a pose a threat um but I think the players we've got and the systems we've got in place and yeah really excited to, to hopefully get get started and get involved this weekend and just finally for me how do you regard the competition for places in your position uh, in the squad just now yeah I think it's the most competitive um Scotland squad I've been in um yeah, I just think young guys coming through, pushing some of the players and just every new addition has brought something different, you know, but everyone's bought in and we've got a great culture here, a great environment and 
it's testament to what we've got here. The boys, when they're not selected for the Scotland Stokes, they're absolutely gutted, you know, not just because they're not going to play for Scotland, which is their main thing, but also they're not, they're not going to be in this environment. So, um, so yeah, looking looking really good in the depth charts and looking good for the future. Thank you. Is that, is that a great mix to, to have, Zandy? You talk about the, the kind of new guys coming through. You've also got yourself and, and seven others who, who were picked in that line squad. You've got you know, you feel you get the best of both worlds. That, you know, everybody's on their, on kept on their toes, but you've also got that experience as well. Yeah, big time. I think the big thing for us is when when, when boys come into camp, just just be yourself. You know, um, I can say that definitely in Scotland squads in the past it hasn't been like that. You know, um, especially as a young player coming in, um, to see these young guys coming in and sort of getting up to speed and just being themselves and enjoying the rugby as soon as they come in. Um, I thought I took me maybe one or two years to sort of get that confidence up and, and be myself. So, um, so yeah, it's a big thing for us, driving that for the culture and for the environment. And I also think that means boys, when they come in, they, they can express themselves, they can try things and um, young lads and putting in meetings and stuff, that's, that's what's going to drive us forward, you know. If you've got an opinion, it doesn't matter who you are, um, let it be known and you're not going to get laugh, laughed at or anything, you know. So massive, yeah, growth mindset in the squad and, we want to achieve, achieve some stuff and I think um, yeah we've definitely got a squad for it and as you said that balance is uh, is awesome well, What's been the key to that you know obviously you're saying that maybe you couldn't come in and hit the ground run because you know you don't didn't have the freedom maybe to express yourself what's been the key in kind of changing that you think? Uh, I can't put my finger on it but for me personally I think coming in after the World Cup you know we went over there and didn't give a good account of ourselves I think it hit some some players pretty hard. Um, I was I was pretty good, um, but then coming back, I think I don't know. For me personally, I put so much pressure on myself to 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 play well. You know, as the world stage, and I think I took I took away the fundamental thing that made me enjoy rugby. I wasn't enjoying it. Um, I came back from injury. Um, I wanted to be back at my best when I hadn't worked. I hadn't had enough time to get there. You know, from injury and stuff. So I think for me. Going back to the basics of why did I start playing rugby? Because I enjoy it and um, I love the sport. And I think um, since I've gone back to that and been working with um, with a few people, you know, on, on that sort of side of things and that psychology side of things, it's definitely, um, yeah, I feel like I've, I've played some good rugby. So as I was saying, like no one knew they finished that article, but uh, I, I'm, I'm happy in a good spot and enjoying my rugby. So uh, yeah, it's, can't complain. Obviously, uh, Friday night was a, a disappointment, but it was a, a good run out for you to, to come back in a, such a, a big test on, on Friday and the, the physical challenge you're going to face. You, you had that as well, didn't you? To, to get easy, not, not easing yourself back in, but getting right back into it. Yeah, I think definitely after two, I sort of definitely needed a break. Um, and I was really lucky I got that and came into pre season with Glasgow and was itch, itching to get going, but yeah, no, really, really happy to get a game at the weekend. Um, it was great being back with the boys. It wasn't the result we wanted. Um, we did some good stuff, but yeah, as you said, you know, Leinster is always a physical, physical game, and um, that's one of the departments that I pride myself on. So um, yeah, I really enjoyed getting back out there. As I said, pretty rusty. The lungs were blowing. Um, I was walking a fair bit, so <laughs> got to improve that for hopefully in these next couple of weeks. But um, but we'll get there. So yeah, really glad to get that game out of the way and hopefully kick, kick on from there.